Welcome to Angular Production Ready Setup. This is my preferred setup of the working with Angular since it came out. And I think this guide is really good for both new and experienced developers as it's not every day you set up a new Angular project and it's good to have all of the best practices in one place. This entire setup is available on GitHub, links in the description below. Before we can start, we have to set up our development environment. You can skip this part if it's already ready, but I highly suggest you watch it anyway, as I have some extra tips and tricks for experienced developers. The first thing we need is Git. This is a version control system made so it's so much easier to collaborate on writing good code. Next up, we need Node.js or the LTS version of it. We need this because it's packaged with something called npm or node package manager which has become the de facto package manager for the front end and what we're going to use to pull down angular. This might be replaced by Dino in the future which is the successor to node but it's still too early to tell. That means we are ready to install the Angular CLI that will allow you to generate all the code you need for your Angular project. It's easily installed by npm install globally Angular CLI. This will install it globally so it's available as ng at any time. Next up, we're creating the GitHub repo. This is of course optional, but I highly suggest you do this as GitHub is the best place to put your source code. Give your project a cool name and set it to public as you will get all the features of GitHub for free if you go open source. And you should also create a readme file so you can clone it immediately. Now we are ready to clone it locally on our computer. And I highly suggest you use source tree for this as it's a visual git tool which makes it so much easier as you don't have to remember all of your git commands. This is of course optional. Cloning your repo locally in source tree is really easy. You just get the HTTPS URL and go to source tree where you just input the source URL and it will give you a default local path which makes it possible to just clone it. Next up, we need a good editor. I highly suggest Visual Studio Code, which has become the de facto standard for front-end development, and it's free with a lot of amazing features. And if you choose to go with Visual Studio Code, I highly suggest using a few core plugins. The first one is Angular Language Service, which will give you built-in support for Angular in Visual Studio Code. The next one is Material Icons, that will give you the proper material icons for your Angular project. And the last one is Prettier, which will help you with code formatting, especially in HTML files. And if you're on Windows, I highly suggest using the Windows Terminal as well. This is a sort of a command line frontend or wrapper around PowerShell and a lot of other shells that gives you, for example, tab support. Or you can use the built-in one in Visual Studio Code if you want. But I prefer to have it as a separate window. But that means we are finally ready to generate the project with the Angular CLI, which will do all the work for us. We just do ng new and the project name. Then we set directory to the current folder as the default is a subfolder and we want it in the current folder as we are doing it inside the clone project. And we're enabling strict, which will give us a lot of extra type safety on top with Angular and TypeScript. But there's one small problem before we can generate the project. There's an existing readme file in the project as we needed it to be able to clone the repo immediately, but we have to remove it before we generate a new project as Angular will generate a new readme file. So just remove that old file. And that means we are ready to generate a new project. This will take you through a few steps where you have to say yes or no and select a few values like we want a router, yes, and we want to enable SUS. This will now generate the entire project for us with all the necessary files and install all of the NPM dependencies. And now it's really easy to open a new project with ng serve o. Dash o just open it automatically in a browser for you. The first time you run ng serve on the new project, it will ask you if you want to share anonymous usage data with Google to help them create a better CLI. This is of course up to you and you can change it later. Next up, it will cross compile some elements from an old version of Angular to a new one. This will only be done the first time and after each time you do npm install something new. And then it will compile the actual project in serve mode and open it in a new browser window for you, which will give you this website. This is a default HTML page you will get with a new Angular project that will give you a few built in commands that you easily can run 
and links to relevant documentation. This is a page we will replace later. Next up, we add Angular material. This is Google's design system and the component library for it is created by the Angular team. So we have great built-in support and adding it is really easy with something called Angular schematics, which will do everything for us. We add Angular material with just running the simple command ng add Angular at material. This would take us through a few steps as with ng new that will allow us to select, for example, the theme we want. And if we want to set up the typography automatically and animation. All of these have default values. You can just press enter if you don't want to take a choice now. And we can open the project again with the same command we used earlier, ng serve. The next thing we need to add is a normalizer. This is due to the fact that the default styles in all browsers are slightly different, like the default styles for button, body, and all those default HTML elements. One solution is to normalize everything to the same values. Another one is to reset everything down to nothing and then re-add your styles. I prefer the normalizing approach, and that's why I want to use Normalizer CSS. It's easy to install it with npm and then add it in the styles file. Running the npm install command will install the package and all its own dependencies. And save will add it to your package file so it will be installed on every new computer as well. The next step is to import normalize in our styles component so it's compiled with the rest of the Angular project. We can do this easily by opening code in the current path by writing code dot in order to open it directly. This will open up Visual Studio Code and allow us to navigate down into the SRC and styles file, which is where we will add in our import. This leaves only one step left in the initial setup of the Angular project, and that is to remove the boilerplate in the app component file, which you can find by going into the app component file under app, app component, and removing everything except the very last line which is the router outlet. This is a really good initial setup if you're out just learning Angular, but if you're working on production level code, then you need a, some kind of structure on top. There's a really good folder structure in Angular that you can follow to help you along. This is based on the official Angular style guide, but you will get a lot of this for free if you use the CLI to generate your projects and components. And of course, it depends on your project size, as smaller projects need less structure, but larger ones really need it. My preferred folder setup, based on the style guide, is to have one core folder for all shared elements that are not visual, like services, guards, and interceptors. Then a shared folder for all shared visual elements, like components and directives. And this includes a lot of shared modules. As I don't want one big shared module, I want smaller independent modules that can be reused easily. Inside the shared folder, I have a folder called models. This is where I put all of my shared interfaces, types, enums, and so on. And that means that every single folder except this core and shared folder is a top level page. This gives us a really good structure, especially for small, medium, and somewhat large projects. But if you're working on a really large project, you probably want some extra structure on top. But that means we're finally ready to create our first top level page. And we want lazy loading, but that can be a bit of work in Angular, but luckily we're using the Angular CLI, so it's really easy. We just ng generate module home with the route home and attach it to the module app module or the top level module. Running this command will allow us to set up everything we need for this new route, including creating its own module with its own routing module, which is needed for the lazy loading. Going in the browser and navigating to slash home will give us the new component we just generated. I also highly recommend that you do not support Internet Explorer 11 or earlier at all, as you will lose out on key features like CSS variables, flex grid, and a lot of other cool elements you really need to create a good website. And you should also embrace Prettier. This is a code formatter that will help you format your code in a really consistent way, and it works really well with Angular code, especially the HTML code. Prettier is not meant to be highly configurable, but you can configure it a bit, and these are my preferred default values. Next up, we have testing. 
and it's really easy with Angular as you will get a lot of tools built in already. So you can just run ng test in order to run all of your unit tests. Running ng test will compile your project and open it in a browser window for automatic testing or unit testing. That's just testing one component at a time. I can see that component being tested rendered at the bottom here. And this error is due to the fact that we removed all of the default code in our app component.html file. And this test can be easily fixed by going into the app component spec file and removing the last two checks, which will then rerun the test and everything is green. This UI is really useful for debugging your test, but sometimes you just want to run through the test once to see if they're passing or not, like during your pull request check. That's easily done by ng-test and adding in watchful so it's not rerunning the test all the time. And browser Chrome headless so it's only running it in memory or virtually. So running it in a headless and watchful mode will mean it will run through it faster and it will stop after one execution. But it's harder to debug. This was unit testing, testing components in isolation, but sometimes you want to test your entire application at once, and that's where end-to-end -end testing comes into play. I highly suggest you use Cypress, as it has become a game-changer within end-to-end -end testing, and it's really easy to get started by installing it and running it. Installing Cypress is really easy with NPM. Running open Cypress for the first time will generate a few default tests for you or example tests that you can use to understand how Cypress works. This UI will allow you to click on any of the tests you have to see them in action. This is not a tutorial on Cypress, so I will have a video in the future on a full setup for Cypress. The final part of this guide is the completion of the GitHub setup. We want to set up something called GitHub Action that runs automatically on each pull request so that test, lint and build will run and need to succeed in order for someone to be able to merge a pull request, which will give us higher code quality. And this can be enforced with something called branch protection. So let's set up the GitHub Action. Before we're creating the actual GitHub Action, we need to create a few NPM scripts so it's easier to write the actions. First one, CI command for testing without watching and without headless, and one for build, so we will actually build for prod, so we'll get all of the potential errors. Creating a GitHub action for our pull request is actually really easy. Just go into the GitHub project, go to actions, and find the pre-setup for Node.js. This default setup is really nice, but we want to make a few changes. First off, we want to give it a good name, like lean test and build, and only run it on any push, but not to the master branch. This will be needed so it runs on each branch except master, as it's there we want to do the checks before any pull requests. We need to remove the node versions currently not supported entirely by Angular, just to be safe, and then replace the default commands. The first command is npm ci. This installs your dependencies more or less in the same way as npm install. The next one is lint, which will lint the entire project. Then we have the ci test command, which is the one we wrote earlier in the package file. We just run everything in Chrome headless. And the last one is build ci, which will build it for production. This means the GitHub action is ready, so we just have to commit it to the repo. Remember, this GitHub action is only running on new branches or branches that are not master. So we have to check out to a new branch, give it a random name, and commit something to that branch, and push those changes in order to get that action to run. This will start execution of the GitHub action we just set up, and we can actually open it and track the progress in real time. But this check is not required on any pull requests currently, so you can just skip it if you want, and that is bad. So we have to go into settings and setting up something called branch protection. By going to branches and adding a branch protection rule for master. Where we require pull requests, and we have to require status checks to be passed, including the one we just created. And optionally that the branch should be up to date. Then we can just create this branch protection rule by confirming with our password 
and this should require it to pass before any pull request can be merged and it has to be up to date as well. So here you can see the check is restarted as we just pulled in master into this branch. We could also set up a GitHub action that automatically deploys to Firebase each time we merge a pull request to master, but that is a topic for a future video, so please subscribe for that. And that means we are ready to go. We have everything we need to get started on creating a production ready application with Angular with the best practices you can get. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new and exciting. And if you have any troubles, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you.